One of the things that most stands out for people when they first start studying astronomy is how big things are, how old things are, and how empty things are. This diagram here shows a variety of objects. We look at the Earth and we think, oh, well the Earth is a pretty densely packed object. Some of us live in big cities where there are a lot of people around. But when you look at the solar system, the diagram just to the right of the Earth, you see how empty things are. And in fact, that isn't even really shown to scale that effectively. But if you look throughout the pictures there up to the Milky Way galaxy, the local group, our local supercluster, and then the background, which is showing the universe, you see that the universe consists of, at pretty much no matter what scale you look at, lots of empty space and then some massive objects. Those massive objects might seem big unless you start to compare them to something else. So our Earth, for example, is about 10,000 kilometers in diameter. But compared to the solar system, the solar system is about 10 billion kilometers in diameter. Uh, a lot larger. Our solar system is just one grouping of objects, planets, asteroids, comets, dust grains uh, in the Milky Way galaxy. That Milky Way galaxy is about 10 to the 18th kilometers across. But once we get into these high exponents, 10 to the 18th, it's a little bit difficult to conceptualize. So we've switched to another unit uh, called light years. Another way to describe the size of our galaxy is that it's about 100,000 light years across. That means if you were on one side of the galaxy, you turned on a flashlight, that light would take about 100,000 years to get to the other side of the galaxy. Our galaxy is not isolated. It's in what's called the local group with three, uh, a total of three somewhat large galaxies, uh, similar to the Milky Way. One of them is the Andromeda Galaxy, and the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy are moving towards each other, and they will collide with each other uh, into the distant future. We'll probably talk about that at another time. And there are also a lot of smaller galaxies, uh, just generically called dwarf galaxies. That local group is about a million light years across. Well, that local group itself is part of a larger cluster of galaxies called the local supercluster. That local supercluster is about 100 million light years across. And then if you look at the background, you can see the universe consists of almost a weaving, like a, um, a loosely weaved afghan or something like that, of galaxies all within these different superclusters. Uh, oh, and the universe, let's we can go back to that. The universe, it's about 10 billion light years across. So a 10 to the uh, 14 billion light years, if you want to go to the nearest billion, around 13.7 or so billion light years with a little bit more precision. Looking through a telescope, you're looking at things at a different distance away, but you're also looking at ages as well, because as I said, light takes a finite time to get to us. So if you're looking at an object that uh, here is described as farther away, 12 billion light years away, we see it, uh, that light took 12, uh, 12 billion years to get to us. So we're looking at something that could not have been formed in the last 12 billion years, because if it was formed only a billion years ago and it's that far away, that light hasn't got to us yet. So in astronomy, when we're talking about distances, we really, and the fact that we can see something puts a limit to its age. You could even argue that for people that you're talking to, because when you talk to someone, you see them, if you see them, they're, they're across the room from you. The light is bouncing off them, sunlight, light from the ceiling, whatever, from the lights, is bouncing off them and then coming to you. The light bounces off them and gets to you. It takes a finite amount of time, a very small amount of time, but a finite amount of time. So you know that that thing that you're looking at can't be younger than the duration it takes the light to get from that thing to you. So the object there that's seven billion light years away, that thing has to be older than seven billion years old. It could be up to the age of the universe, 14 billion light years, the observable universe, but it can't be younger than that. 
You note I use the term observable universe. Since light takes a finite amount of time to get to us, if something's older than 14 billion years, that light has, uh, it can't have reached us yet because it started more than 14 billion years ago. So there's more in the universe than what we can see as the observable universe because the universe keeps expanding. And that's something we can talk about at a later date as well. But basically, you turn on the light or a star forms and starts emitting light. That light is moving outwards. The galaxy is expanding as well. So there are very old objects that are out beyond the observable universe. As the universe ages, this will be well into the future, billions and I think maybe even trillions of years into the future, the universe will spread out so much that everything will be so far away from us that the light hasn't reached us yet. And I really shouldn't say us because I don't know if we can conceptualize an us trillions of years into the future. Our textbook likes to use this 1 to 10 billion scale to help us visualize things. So what you see there, the picture of the sun and planets and a few dwarf planets, two dwarf planets, Pluto and Eris, that shows those objects to the proper scale size, but not the proper distance away. It's really difficult to have both scale size and scale distance on the same diagram. The diagram below it shows a scale model of the solar system that is built in Washington, D.C. So each of those little black dots there represents a planet or Pluto, a dwarf planet. It shows those dots the same size, but the distances between them are to scale. Now, if you actually go to this in Washington, D.C., they have models and they're the proper scale size as well. But you couldn't, have, if you could see the dot of Jupiter, you wouldn't be able to see the dot of Pluto. So that just wouldn't make sense on that one. So take the actual sizes and the actual distances between things, divide them by 10 billion, and that's what the, how the book would describe it. So something in the book that two things on the scale model that are an inch apart in real life would be 10 billion inches apart. We've spent time talking about sizes and a little bit about ages before. Let's revisit this whole age thing. But again, just like we have the 1 to 10 billion size scale, we essentially have a 1 to 10 billion, 1 to 14 billion, 1 to 13.7 billion scale size for ages as well. So if the Big Bang formed on January 1st, you can see how everything else plays out with that. So the calendar is pretty empty until you get to December, and we'll zoom in to the December and the December 31st in just a little bit. So if the Big Bang was on January 1st, the Milky Way starts to form in February. So about 10% into the year is when the Milky Way starts to form. Not much is happening relevant to us. There's star formation continually, so you can see there the months of March, April, May, and so on doesn't show anything on this calendar, that doesn't mean nothing was happening. That means in our little transition from universe, or maybe our family tree, from universe to our galaxy to our planet, and for the most part, our solar system, nothing is happening until September, and very specifically, September 22nd, which is right around the first day of fall. I'm not sure if that means anything or not. And again, not much in October and November, Again, that doesn't mean that nothing was happening. That means if we continue the family tree, there wasn't a whole lot of things related to us happening there. Now, single-celled creatures would have been formed, but this calendar focuses a little bit more on um, larger scale life. So the middle of December would have been the Cambrian explosion. So that is a time uh, a few hundred million years ago when many, many species uh, came into existence. The day after Christmas, uh, ironically enough, is the rise of the dinosaurs. Oh, maybe we should make a movie of that. The day after Christmas, the rise of the dinosaurs. Oh, sequel, December 30th, the demise of the dinosaurs. So the dinosaurs in this scale 
lasted four days. You're thinking four days? Ha <laughs> ha, stupid dinosaurs. Oh, maybe stupid us. Because if we look at this, all of the human family tree happens in the very last day. So at nine o'clock, our earliest humanoid ancestors have evolved. Two minutes before midnight is when human, uh, modern humans evolve. And then just the last minute of this year, agriculture arises. The, the pyramids built. Most of the stuff that this book is based on, well, all the stuff this book is based on is in the last few seconds. Uh, most of what the book is based on is just in the last second. So this 1 to 10 billion scale really helps us conceptualize times on the calendar and distances with positions. So if you don't remember much about scale sizes and you get lost in a sea of specific diameters and orbital radiuses and orbital periods, the time it takes for a planet to get around the sun, it, don't worry about remembering that. Remember this 1 to 10 billion scale. Kind of keep in mind this picture here, uh, especially the picture of the National Mall and also this calendar here, including everything that we know about written history, all happened in the last few minutes of the year.